the beautiful thing about you is that you accept our worship no matter if it goes like we expect it to or not, Lord. That you accept our worship regardless of what we've been through this week. You, you accept our worship, Lord, regardless of how we feel about ourselves, about how we feel about our circumstances, Lord. You accept our worship because you know our hearts. And when we worship you, you fully knowing that you are good regardless of our situations. You love when we come to you. And God, we pray that you would open our hearts and create a sanctuary in our hearts for these moments that we need with you at this time. That we would remember that you are not just God, but that you are the living God. And that your spirit is always Am I a saint? A sinner? What about what others think of me? Who am I? Am I what I do? An artist? An accountant? A teacher? A mother? Or am I what I've achieved? An honor student? An MVP? A winner? Am I the things I've done right? Or am I defined by the things I've done wrong? Am I a saint? A sinner? What about what others think of me? Am I all of these things? None of these things? Who am I? How I identify myself determines how I approach life. If I am what I do, I'll always need to do more and achieve more to find my value. If I am what others say, I'll always try to please people instead of my Heavenly Father. But if I listen to who God says I am and embrace His identity in me, I'll find the freedom to live out all He has planned for me. God calls me His child. He says I am wise and restored, that I'm a brand new creation in Christ. I am chosen and holy and blameless before God. He calls me His masterpiece. I am loved by God. He says I am made complete through the grace and mercy of Jesus, my Savior. And when I see myself the way God sees me, I walk with confidence because I trust the one who answers the question, who am I? Hello, everybody. So we're switching things up a little bit today. I'm Shannon. I'm the administrator here at the church. So just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for letting us come into your house. I know we had some technical issues in the beginning, but I think that we're good and we're clear now. So, well, we're okay. I'm getting that. Yeah. So we're working on it. Hopefully it will come through. We will get there. Um, I get to introduce our next series, which I'm super excited about. Last year, about this time, we did a series called Who Way Am I? And it was all about God and who he is. And we talked about he is creator, he is provider, he is Lord, um, all these wonderful things of who God is. Well, this year we want to talk about who we are in Christ. And I want you to understand that in Christ is really important. It isn't just who people say you are, it's who Christ says you are, who God says you are. And so we're going to spend about the next nine weeks talking about that. Um, we're going to have lots of fun together. Hopefully we're going to get to see each other in person sometime in that those next nine weeks. Um, we're very excited about that. But you have to recognize that we are different people. So our theme verse for the series is going to be 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. So we are new creations. Now let me preface that. You're a new creation if you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. 
So if you haven't done that, super simple. Let's just get it out of the way. All you have to do to ask Christ to be your Lord and Savior is that, Father, I'm a sinner, and I need you. And I believe that your son, Jesus, came and he died for me. And Lord, I believe that he was raised again. And Father, I give you my life, and I want you to be my Lord and Savior. That's as easy as it is. So if you haven't done that, take a second. Let him know who you are. Because you know what? The moment that happens, you are changed. And that's what we're going to spend our time talking about, how you are different. Because Christ says you are different, and he has made you a new creation. So this week, we're going to talk about being chosen. Now, I was super excited about this because we were in a meeting, and we're like, okay, we have all these different words. What do we want to do? And I'm like, ooh, chosen, chosen, pick me. I want that one. Because I thought it's going to be light and fluffy and fun and loving. Well, sort of. We're going to be a little challenging today. But you need to recognize that God chose you. So we're going to spend time talking about who, who am I? I am chosen. That is who I am. God picked me out of everything. The next, please. Thanks. Next. <laughs> Sorry, it just gets like this when I'm here. Thank you. I like that one. We get to pick and choose around here. So we're going to talk about the word. We're going to talk about our purpose. And we have a purpose. We have a purpose to him. We have a purpose for other people. And then we have our final thoughts. So who are we? We are chosen. And Ephesians 1.4, it says, Even before he made the world, God loved us. And he chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us. You need to take that scripture and you need to look at it differently. You need to say, even before he made the world, God loved me and he chose me in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. He chose me. He chose you. See, I think a lot of the time we look at our lives and we're like, well, he chose everyone. Everybody was chosen. And we forget that we are an everyone. We are an individual that he picked. Think about those days where we were in middle school and we played on teams. We all loved playing on teams, right? Everybody get in a line. You had a captain, two captains. Oh, if you were the captain, it was the best thing ever. And so you would sit there and you'd be like, pick me, please, 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 pick me. Please don't let me be the last one. I can't handle being the last one again. And I'm not going to lie, I was the last one sometimes. Not exactly athletically gifted a little at all. None. My kids are back here laughing at me now. God already chose each one of us, though. He looked at us before the world was created. He knew that he was going to pick us. So you need to recognize that you individually are chosen. You are the one he picked. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Do you really think that would matter if he just went, I'm choosing everyone? He did choose everyone, but he chose you very specifically. Our next one is 1 Peter 2.9. It says, but you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are our royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. And as a result, okay, so he chose us. He told us, you are my people. You are my person. You are royal priest. You are a holy nation. We're God's possession. And as a result of that, he said, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. You are a chosen people. We've got to get that in our, in our heads and in our hearts. You are not on this earth just because. God put you here. He formed you. He knows the hairs on your head. You are chosen. Understand how incredibly important that is. In Colossians 3.12 it says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, uh-oh, I don't like this part. I really hated this part, actually. You must. That isn't like it'd be good if, or maybe you should. It says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Those are things that you take on because he chose you. 
So you have to work at it. You have to get into it. In John 15, 16, it says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. Huh. You didn't choose me. I chose you. That's God. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I looked at you. I picked you. I made you. You are mine. And I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. What are those fruits? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, all that stuff. He said, I chose you to do that so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. Now, I love the last part of that because if you take it by itself, God's going to give me anything I want. It's not exactly what it means because you see what happens is, is we become more Christ-like as the chisel is working and we look more and more like Christ. He then gives us what we ask for because we're asking for what he wants. He isn't just sitting there like, well, I mean, they said my name. They want, to, they want to have money today. I'm going to give them money. No. You know what he's asking? When we ask God, I, I want your heart. God, I want your thoughts. God, I want to see people the way you see them. I want to love people the way you love them. Those are the types of things he's going to give us because we are chosen and we are here. In 1 Thessalonians, whew, that's a hard one to say, 1-4, it says, We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. He didn't just sit there and make you by mistake. He looked at you and he, he was in your mother's womb and he made you. That's how much he loves you. Okay, understand it. And I love this next one, it's kind of long. Romans 8, 30 through 39, because I love the thought of it. I love the thought that we are set apart. We have a purpose in life. And it says, and so those whom God set apart, he called. God set you apart. He called you to do something. And those he called, he put right with himself. How awesome is that? We are put right with him because he called us. And he shared his glory with them. And in view of all this, what can we say? Like, what can we do at that point? If God is for us, who can be against us? Certainly not God. Who did not even keep back his own son, but offered him for all of us? God didn't even hold back his son because he loved you so much. When we think about John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, for whosoever should believe in him, guess what? You're a whosoever. You can believe in him, shall have everlasting life. So God didn't even hold back his son for us, but he offered him for all of us. And he gave us a son, will he not also freely give us all things? Who will accuse God's chosen people? God himself declares them not guilty. Not Christ Jesus, who died, or rather, who was raised to life <laughs> and is at the right side of God pleading with him for us. Who then can separate us from the love of Christ? Who can separate you, you yourself, you the individual, who can separate you from the love of Christ? Can trouble do it? Or hardship? Or persecution? Or hunger? Or poverty? Or death? Or danger? Okay, none of those things can do that. As the scripture says, for your sake, we are in danger of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we have complete victory through him who loved us. We already have the victory. We don't have to look to see if we're going to win. We already know the outcome. We already know what he's speaking. We already know what he said. We already know what comes at the end. And because he loved us, we have victory in him through him. For I am certain that nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life, neither angel nor heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above or the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, 
which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. You are set apart and nothing can separate you. You have a purpose. God just laid it out. He said, look, I have called you. I have told you these things. It's time for you to hear. It's time for you to come. So if we are chosen, it just like on a team, if you're chosen on a team, you have a role. We have a role because God chose us. He called us. So what's our purpose? Why did he put us here? Our purpose is for him to give him glory, to give him honor, and our purpose is for others. We have a job to do on this earth. We have to look and see what he has for us. But we also, very importantly, we are to be giving glory and honor to a God the Father. So in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, it says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Because what's our purpose? To give God glory and praise. So whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. Do you know what glory is? I looked it up. It's praise and thanksgiving. Are you giving praise and thanksgiving to God? Are you thankful for the things you have? Are you thankful for the things that you don't have that maybe haven't come to pass yet? Are you thankful for the hard things? Give him praise. Isaiah 43, 7, which in my opinion, we should just have Isaiah 43 all over the place because I love it. It says, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Everyone who is called by my name, you are called by his name if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the thanksgiving because he formed you and he made you. In Psalm 118, 19, it says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us not exalt his name together. Oh, sorry. Let us exalt his name together. Whew, I'm trying to add. I should not add to the scriptures. <laughs> We're supposed to be excited at giving God praise. God is amazing. Look outside your windows right now. You guys are at your house. You're there. Look outside the windows. How awesome is it that God made all of those things you're seeing? Honestly, look at your wall. God made everything that goes in your drywall. God made everything that we see, touch, all of it. He made it. Are you giving him the praise and the glory that he deserves? And Psalm 150, verse 6, says it the easiest. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you praising the Lord with every breath? Or, especially in this time, are you looking at all those things that are terrible, that aren't working? Are you afraid? I'll tell you what helps. When you give God praise, it focuses you back on who he is, and he is amazing. The next thing we have for, for who am I in Christ and who are chosen is we're supposed to build a relationship with him. He didn't come down and have his son die for us so that we would not know who he is. That's absolutely not how it works. So in 2 Peter 1.3, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who created us by his own glory and goodness. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him. So what do we have to have? We have to know who he is. We have to have a relationship with Christ. We have to have a relationship with God. We have to look and spend time with him. We have to read the Bible. I don't know how many times we say it. You need to know the truth. You need to know who God says he is. Because that's why we can look at him and we can trust him. Because we know him. We have relationship with him. 2 Peter 3.18 says, but grow, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow. We all start out and we don't know. We don't have it all together. And guess what? People that have been Christians for 60 years probably don't have it all together. Okay, we're all in the same boat, but we're all growing. We're all learning. We're all seeing who God is. Those are just a couple of the ways 
that we're supposed to give him glory. And those are a couple of ways why he chose us. So our other thing is, is what does he have for us here? What are we supposed to do on this earth? Because he put us here. He puts you here at exactly this time. I've seen some of the memes going around, and they're awesome about, you know, don't go to 2020, you've got back to the future. Whatever you do, don't go to 2020. And I think most of us feel that way right now. It's crazy out here. But you know what? God knew exactly the time and the place that he put you. And he did it for a purpose. Because while we glorify him, while we love him, while we recognize that we are chosen, we are chosen to tell others about Jesus. I don't know how many times we have to say that. In Mark 18, 15, it says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel of the whole creation. He didn't say sit there. He didn't say maybe. He said go and do. I love that we're not in our four walls right now. Do you know why? Because we have to now go. Because guess what? We can't come here. That means we're out in the world. That means we're out where the community is. That means that we're looking at them saying, what, what God do you want me to do today to love my neighbor? How can I tell them about who you are today? How can I show them how much you love them today? Go and do Matthew 28, 19, this is the one that every missionary loves. This is the one that all the pastors use for missionaries. So this is the one we all know, right? Because we all go, oh, not that one. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go therefore, get off your duff. Go tell them who Christ Jesus is. The world needs to know. That's one of the reasons that he chose us, was that so we could go and we could tell them. Another one is we're supposed to show the hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do really with us. We have hope because God gave us hope. Well, we're supposed to look like Jesus, right? Which means we because he gave us hope, we have hope so we can give it out to others. In Romans 15, 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I love that verse because it says, May you overflow with hope. You see, we get our hope from above. We get our hope from God. And it comes. And you know what? We're not supposed to be greedy. We've had some greed issues. Toilet paper. It's been a mess. Disinfecting spray. No one can find it. Because why? We're greedy. We want it all. That isn't what our hope is supposed to be, though. We're not supposed to sit there and say, okay, God, you gave me hope, and I'm going to keep it right here, and it's going to be mine. No. We say, God, you gave me hope. Now let me give it out. Let me show others. Let me show them who my hope is in, because you've given it to me. In Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Look back at your life. Think about the things you've gone through. Just take a second, take a moment. Has God proven himself faithful to you? Because if he has, you need to tell others. And we know our God is faithful because it says so. You need to tell others about who he is, that they can find hope in every circumstance, every situation. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. It is all about his hope and how they can have that hope too. Another thing we're supposed to be to others, we're supposed to be the light of the world. That's who we're supposed to be. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, you are the light of the world. Very difficult, right? A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. I know we don't know what hills are. They exist. We've seen them in pictures. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it up on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. 
we're back to God getting the glory, God getting the praise because of what he's done in our lives so that we can share it with people. That we can let them know this is who this is who our savior is. We need to tell them. And this last part, this other one, we all really like it. We're supposed to speak the truth. Now, I will tell you, some of us speak the truth very well. Some of us speak the truth not so well. But we are supposed to speak God's truth to the people that he puts us in front of. So in Ephesians 4.15, it says, instead, speaking the truth in what? In love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. So if I speak truth in love, which means I probably need a relationship, I need to know the person I'm talking to or the people I'm talking to, I need to have some ability to speak into their lives. And if I say, you know what, this is the truth, if they're caught in a sin, you know what? That is sin. Guess what? Gluttony, it's sin. Gossip is sin. Adultery, sin. Homosexuality, sin. Lots of things, sin. If I see them and I know them, and I say, you know what? I see this going on in your life, and I'm worried about you, and I'm concerned, because you need to know the truth. The truth is that these things are sin. But let me walk with you because I love you and it doesn't matter. Because you know what? I've got my own mess. I've got my own sins. You may not see them, but they're there. And some of you see them well. I just want to walk with you because I want you to know how much God loves you. You know, we take for granted, I think, in the Christian church that Jesus died for us on the cross. Do you understand what he did? This wasn't a flippant thing. I mean, he prayed, what, the, day, the night of? Father, take this cup, but not my will, but your will be done. Is that your prayer? Not my will, but your will be done? Father, I'll pay the price if it means someone else will hear about you. Father, I'll go where you want me to go because you're so important to me. And because I love you. Are you willing to tell people they're in sin because you love them so much you don't want to see them go to hell? Are you doing the thing that you were chosen to do here on this earth? So my final thoughts are super easy. We talked about the word. We talked about our purpose. Our purpose to him, our purpose to others. And Pastor Nate messaged me last night, and he said, what are your final thoughts? And I went, uh -huh. And then 45 minutes later, I said, these are my final thoughts. You need to understand something. You are chosen. You are chosen. You yourself individually are chosen. You don't have to worry about anything else. And, and you are chosen as an individual, and we are chosen as a people. And we are chosen not just as a people in Grace Community Church. We are chosen as a people of God's followers, of Jesus' followers. You need to know that you are loved. God didn't create you out of spite or shame or anything else. God created you because he loves you. He looked at you and he said, you know what? I love you so much I'm going to send my son to die for you. I love you so much that I'm going to put you together myself. I know everything about you, and I love you. And he chose us for a purpose. Don't think that your purpose is just to sit in one of these chairs or in your house in a chair or on the couch. Your purpose isn't to sit there. Your purpose is to glorify God. Your purpose is to love him and love others. We talk about it all the time. Love God, love others. It's time to move people. It's time to take up what he's called us to do, and take him out into the world. Take him and tell them about who he is. So when you're lost or you feel lost, remember, you are chosen, you are loved, and you have a purpose. You are not a mistake. Father, we are so, we love you so much. 
Lord, we don't always understand what you're speaking to us. And Lord, we don't always know how to do what you want us to do. But Father, I thank you that you are with us, that you have come, that you have spoken. Father, that you have put inside of us exactly what you want for us. And you give us the knowledge. And Lord, the fact that you stand with us. Father, you don't send us out on our own. You don't just shove us out the door. You say, come with me. Let's go. Take my hand. We're going to go. We're going to tell others. We're going we're gonna to show them who I am. Father, help us to be a thankful people, a grateful people. Father, help us to give you glory and honor. Father, you are magnificent. There are no words to describe you, Lord. And the fact that you chose us is beyond imagination. But Father, we are yours because you said so. Father, let us be yours in truth. Let us be yours in our attitude and in our heart. Father, in our actions and our words. Use that chisel, Lord, to take those things off that we don't need anymore or that aren't, that don't make us look like your son. Father, let us be faithful to you. Let us stop putting ourselves first and our wants and our needs. Lord, let us look to you and say, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Let us wake up with that thought and let us go to sleep with that thought. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done today. Because we are following you and we love you. Father, we give you all that we are. And I say that a lot, but Lord, we give you all that we are. We give you our thoughts and our minds. Father, we give you our eyes that we can see what you see. We give you our ears so we can hear what you hear. Father, we give you our mouths so that we can speak the words you would have us speak. Father, we give you our hearts that we would, we would feel what you feel for others. Lord, we give you these bodies and we give you our actions. Lord, let them be yours. Father, we just want to be yours. And Lord, we are thankful that you chose us. We are thankful that you have a plan for us, for each one of us individually. Father, speak your words today. In Jesus' name, amen.
hard things because you have done hard things. Lord, we use your strength. We call on your strength this week in our fear, in our anxiety, in our insecurity, even in our confidence, Lord. We call on your strength. Jesus, remind us that you are always faithful and today is not the day that you will quit. Jesus, you're willing to do so much more. Your goodness did not end that day, and it will not end today, and it will not end tomorrow. 